Hey everybody, welcome back. If you've ever tried using one form across multiple lists in ClickUp, you probably ran into the same issue I did. ClickUp only lets you connect one form to one list. But in this video, I'm gonna show you a simple workaround, a way to use a single form that automatically routes tasks to different lists depending on who's filling it out. I have two client request forms here on my screen. One of them is for Bidgely, and the other one is for company XYZ. These forms are identical. They're the same form, but you'll see up in the URL, there is a parameter that we've added showing who the requester is. So I'm gonna fill out my form request as Sheffa from Bidgely. So here I am in my Bidgely URL. So I'm gonna put in the request title, landing page update. And then the request details, I can add some more details. Let's put the urgency, since it seems like a bug, as high. And we're going to say that we need this resolved by Monday morning. I'm going to go ahead and hit submit. Let's go ahead, opening the same form. Now I'm impersonating company XYZ. Let's go ahead and fill out a form request for company XYZ. And let's say we want them to build an ad campaign. And then the request details, same thing. I can put any information that I need as um, company XYZ. Let's go ahead and put this as low priority. We're gonna say that we need this by the end of July, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit submit. Let's jump into our ClickUp and see where these requests got routed. So I'm in my ClickUp, and I'm in my account projects folder. This is where I have my list for my different client projects. So if I go to Bidgely, I will see right over here my landing page update. So we can see that this was routed correctly. This landed in our Bidgely list, so that's great. If I open up Company XYZ, here I can see my Build a Christmas Ad campaign request. So this is one form that's getting routed to multiple lists based off of a workaround solution that I've put in place. To build this out, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna create a list to track our requests. So this is gonna be called Request Tracker. This is a hidden list. I don't need my team members to see this. This is just for routing purposes. In this request tracker list, there is one custom field that you need and it's a drop down field. So that drop down field, we labeled it requester. And in this, we have listed all of our client names. So we have Bidgely, Company XYZ, Scale Marketing, and Dunder Mifflin. So you're gonna wanna go into your ClickUp list and add a drop down to map your requester and you're gonna to wanna to put all of your client names in there. Like I said, this is a hidden list, but this is where all of our form submissions are going to jump into initially. I put my form under the account projects folder, so let's jump into the account projects folder. Here we can see the client request form, and this is where we'll see our secret for the solution. So if I come into our client request form, I'm gonna go into settings, and here we see that this requester field is grayed out. The reason that this requester field is grayed out is because it's hidden. You notice that when we were actually filling out the form, there wasn't a requester field and it's because it's not getting filled out by the client. We are auto-populating it before we send that form to our client. So here we have the requester field is hidden. Then we added our standard fields in here. I put the request title. I mapped this to our task name. I put the request details, I map this to our task description. As I said, if you want any additional custom fields, you can add to this form as you would like, but the primary requirement for the solution of work is you are gonna want the requester custom field here and you're gonna mark it as hidden. So here's the eyeball emoji indicating that this question is hidden from the form. And then in my settings, we are creating this task in the request tracker. So that hidden list is where these task requests are going to get created. And then the last thing is, we are gonna to want to build an automation in the request tracker list. So if I come in a request tracker, what I'm pretty much doing is whenever a form request gets routed in here, based off of what the requester field is set to, we are just immediately moving it out of this list. So this list is just a temporary, it's a jump board. So when a request gets added in here, it's automatically getting jumped from here into the respective client list. So if I jump into automations in my request tracker list, let's go to manage automations. I've already created this automation, so we'll just duplicate this. We created for the Bidgely client request and the company XYZ. 
we're going to go ahead and build this automation for one of our other clients, which is scale marketing, just for the purposes of this demo. Let me jump into the automation to show you how this works. When a task is created in this hidden list, we know that it's only coming from the form because there's no other way to access it. And if the custom field requester is equal to Bidgely, we are immediately moving it to the Bidgely list. We're removing the requester field just because we don't have that field in the actual list for our projects. So we're removing that and we're immediately moving it to that list. Same thing for when a task gets created and the requester is equal to company XYZ. We are removing the requester value and we are then moving it to the company XYZ list. So to finish this off, let me go ahead and do this for scale marketing as well. I'm gonna duplicate this automation, duplicate it in the current location. I'm gonna leave my trigger as is over here when the task gets created. I'm just gonna update my condition for when my requester is equal to scale marketing. I'm going to go ahead, my action, I'm gonna remove the value from requester and I'm gonna move this rather than a company XYZ. This is gonna then move to scale marketing. And I'm going to update the name of this to scale marketing client request. All right. After that, the final step here is finding the URL to send to our clients. So I have this all accounts list where I manage all of my clients. And here I've created a custom field to track the client request form link. Like I said, it's one form but we are passing a parameter in there for what that specific requester dropdown should be set to. So for this one, we have the requester set to Bidgely and this one that we filled out, it was set to company XYZ. Now I'm gonna show you how I got this unique ID. So this is where make.com comes in. I used make.com just to find those value IDs for the requester dropdown. So in make.com, you're just gonna wanna create a new scenario and the module you're gonna to wanna to use is list all accessible custom fields. So I'm clicking on this ClickUp module down here and I'm gonna search custom fields and I see a module to list all accessible custom fields. So I'm gonna click on that, I'm gonna open it. You're gonna to wanna to set your connection to ClickUp. And then you can map if you have your list ID. If you don't know how to find your list ID, you can always hit select. So I'm gonna select my list. So I'm in the Bidgely demo workspace. My list lives in the account management space. It's within the account projects folder. And my list name is request tracker. That's the list that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna run this module. And here we go. We have our requester custom field. This is the dropdown that I'm trying to set the parameter for. So before I even send the form to my client, I already have it mapped in there that, hey, this should be mapped to Bidgely, or this should be mapped to company XYZ. So the way that I do this is I come into ClickUp, I have my form, and you're gonna wanna click copy link. If you paste it up, you'll see right in the URL, you see at the end of the URL where it says XXXX, that's where I'm trying to actually put the value for what the requester should be for when I'm sending it to Bidgely or if I'm sending it to scale marketing. So in my accounts list, I see that I already have the form for Bidgely. I already have the form for company XYZ. So let's find the form that we should be sending to the scale marketing client. So for scale marketing, we can see that the value for the requester dropdown is this ID right over here. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go where I have my URL and I'm gonna remove those four X's and I'm gonna paste that specific value. So if I copy this, this is the form that my scale marketing client is now going to fill out. So if I hit enter, you'll see that this is gonna take me to that same client request form that the other two were shown as. So I'm gonna go ahead and have that as my unique link for my scale marketing client. The reason that that's their unique link is because when they're filling it out, like I said, in this form, there's a hidden field and that's a requester field. It's automatically being mapped already. And that's it. We just built a workaround solution to be able to create one form that connects to multiple lists. There's no extra work for your clients. They don't have to actually put in their company name, which makes it much easier and much more professional. If this was helpful, go ahead and hit like and subscribe for more workflow and automation tips. And if you want help setting this up, drop a comment below. 
I'd be happy to help. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time.